Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn how to customize our interface and add some more icons to our interface that can help us expedite our workflow. Before we make a new profile and customize it, I'll show you my existing profile where I've already customized my tools and toolbar. At the top of my screen, I've added the Save As button right here. It looks like a floppy disk with a pen. And I've turned on all of my tool groups and moved them to the top of my screen. A quick way to turn on and off certain tools is to right click next to a group of existing ones, such as right here. And now I can click on this form one that turns itself off every time you open and close review. This happens because this form group and other form tools are only available in Review Extreme, so Bluebeam checks to see if you have Review Extreme and essentially keeps it off or on depending on your preferences. And it turns itself off due to a small bug. So I'm going to turn it on, and now we can see all of those tools right here. Now what I can do is, is I can go to the Tools dropdown and see the full list of all the different tools by mousing over toolbars. There's also three special toolbars that are at the top of this list, and one of them, the status bar, is turned off by default. You guys can see the status bar at the bottom of my screen. I've probably talked about it in another tutorial. You can see the ready text in the bottom left and these buttons right here. I'm going to turn it off just to show you what it looks like when it's off. This is typically what everybody else's interface and review looks like when their status bar is turned off by default. So I'll turn it back on. And now we have this nice new bar at the bottom of our screen. And in a later tutorial, I'll discuss what all of these different options mean if I haven't discussed it already. Now, what we can do is, is we can click on Customize in this dropdown and start to change where our icons go. But before I do this, I'm going to make a brand new profile. So I'm going to go to the Review dropdown, Mouse over Profiles. Usually the Review Profile is the first one that's in the list that's used by default. But it's really nice to use the Review Advanced Profile because it already splits your major icons on the left and right. Let me show you what I mean. We're going to click on Review first. And now we can see that we have all of our major icons, these white icons on the left side. Our right side has some of those icons that we saw in my previous profile, but they were at the top of my screen. And Review has decided to turn these on and move them to the right side. If I right click next to this set of icons, we can see that they're the shapes and text tool sets, and they're basically turned on for our convenience. The problem with this is that if we wanted to look at our tool chest and click on a tool, and then we wanted to modify that tool, we have some options that appear at the top of our screen when a tool is selected, whether it's in the tool chest or whether you click on a markup. But there are other options that are not here that we can only find in our properties panel right here. So the problem is that I can only have one panel open on either the left or the right side at once. So instead, we're going to go back to the Review dropdown and mouse over Profiles. We're going to click on the Review Advanced Profile. This way it becomes our active profile. This is the Review Advanced Profile. I've made a few modifications to it at the top of the screen, but essentially this is the same profile as the default one. It automatically splits our tools on the left and the right side of our screen. One special function that is one of our major functions is this form one, which is not available by default if you do not have Review Extreme. Other things that you can do to modify these buttons is you can right click next to any set of these buttons, such as right clicking right here, then mousing over show, and you can see the full list of all of our major functions. Major functions are all essentially white and they look like this. And the minor tools or the other tools that we have can be found usually at the top of our screen and sometimes on the right of our screen. And we can tell because if we go to the tools drop down and mouse over toolbars, all of these are our minor tools or different tools that are not part of the major functions and the major tools found on our side panels by default. So this is how we can tell the difference. And I've already turned on some of the toolbars that I find usually useful for most of the clients that I've trained. You can also turn on these if you want to just have about two lines of tools at the top of your screen. On my profile, I have three lines just because I want to have all my tools open for demonstration purposes. But the less lines you have turned on or the less tools you have turned on and the less lines you have, the more viewing space you'll have. And this is where the review profile does have an advantage in having a bit more viewing space, but you sacrifice functionality for that. So we're going to use the review advanced profile and we're going to click on manage profiles. And now we're going to make a copy of it. So we're going to click on review advanced, click on add. We're going to call this toolbar 
customization tutorial. And then we're going to click OK. Our screen will flash and flicker a little bit. The new profile is now activated and it made a copy of the active profile. So whichever profile we currently had active, which had a check next to it, which was Review Advanced, it made a copy of that. To be safe, I also clicked on Review Advanced in the list and then clicked on Add just to make sure that it made a copy of it. Now I'm just going to click OK. We're going to go back and make sure that our profile is currently in use. There it is, our new profile, and now we can customize this without having to change any of the other profiles. Now that we're here, we're ready to finally look into customizing our profile, adding the Save As button amongst other buttons. Now, while we were working and while we changed our profile, a little bit of a visual bug happened, and I'll show you how we can fix it. If we look at the bottom of our screen, we can see that some of our icons are cut off. And it looks like essentially our navigation bar has some of its icons hidden altogether in these drop downs, such as this drop down here and this drop down here. And this drop down right here also has lots of important information. So we can't cycle between our pages at the moment, and it looks like we have a bit of a problem. The quickest way to fix this is to go to our tools drop down, mouse over toolbars, and then click on our navigation bar to turn it off. Now it's gone, and if we turn it on again, now it looks as it should. All the icons are visible and we can see everything and nothing is collapsed in a dropdown such as this dropdown right here. So that's one way to fix a visual bug such as that to turn off the toolbar and then turn it back on. Now that we've fixed that small navigation bar bug, let's look at our toolbars and let's finally customize them to our liking. So we can quickly right click next to our existing tools and we can turn on whichever tools we want. We'll leave these on the way they are. These tools groups that are turned on right now are typically the most important and used ones. From this list, I can recommend that everybody will benefit from advanced and advanced text. You don't need control point, and if you're not signing, you don't need digital signature. Document, document management, edit, and file are extremely useful and important, and I recommend everybody has those turned on. But you don't need document management turned on if you're not going to be using Bluebeam Studio, so you can turn that off if you're not going to use that function. Then we have the measure toolbar, which is very big. It includes all of these purple tools right here. So you could have that turned on, or you can save all your measurement tools to the tool chest and essentially turn it off to save some space, just like that. And then order is very nice to have. You can change the order of different objects that are ahead or behind of other objects. So that's quite useful. These order tools are right here and they activate when you click on a markup. So that's quite useful. And then the last five tool groups are quite nice in this list. Now, while we're here, we want to add that Save As button next to our Save button right here. So we're going to right click next to these tools and click on Customize. And of course, we can find that by going to Tools and Toolbar and Customize. The only difference between going the long route, Tools and Toolbars, is that we get these three major toolbars in this list. Let's click on Customize. This interface can be a bit overwhelming, but we'll start from the upper left and we'll work our way down to the bottom right. So on the upper left, we have categories, and we can see all of the possible functions that exist in Bluebeam Review. I can click on this dropdown, for example, and click on Edit, and now I can see all the different functions for the Edit group. Now, this is not what is currently visible in my program. This is what actually exists in Bluebeam Review itself, and I can essentially move these onto my toolbars in the program. So we're going to go back to File, because in File we have Save As. Now we're going to move to the toolbar up here. These toolbars are the actual toolbars that we have in our profile. So if I click on the File toolbar, the items for that toolbar display right below it, right here. And we can see that there are some tools that are currently in the toolbar, but they're not turned on. So whatever doesn't have a check next to it is currently turned off. And we can see that next to Save, we have Save All, but Save As is not in this list. So we actually have to take Save As in the program and move it into our toolbar in the profile. So we do that by selecting Save As from our commands list. Then we can click on this arrow right here to add the command. We can also add separators and blank spaces in between certain functions. And you can see that some of those spaces exist in some of our existing toolbars. For example, this toolbar right up here starts with the edit text button, the AB right here, and we can tell because the vertical dots right to the left of it are present. Then we have this divider that was added, 
It is called a separator, actually, in Bluebeam Review. And that is right here. And then we have some more, to another tool, and then we have another separator, and then three more tools. And then this group of tools ends, and we have a new group, which is signified by these vertical dots going down. So the vertical dots to the left of a tool group essentially allow you to click on that and drag that tool group. And I'll show you how we can reorder them after we add the Save As button. So we now added Save As to the right side by clicking on the arrow right here. It's on the bottom of our list, so we're going to click on Save As and use these blue arrows to move it up. We're going to move it in between Save and Save All. Save All is not turned on, so we won't even see it. And I don't recommend using Save All. You want to make sure that when you save files, that you look and see what name of which, what file you are saving. Even if you have 10 files open, saving them one by one won't take too long. And sometimes you don't want to save a file after doing some minor visual edits to it, just for clarity's sake, and you were just trying to demonstrate something. So this is why we like to keep save all off, but you can turn it on if you want to use it. So we have save and save as checked on right next to each other. Now we're going to click OK. Before we do, look on the upper left side and see how it changes. There it is. Now we have our floppy disk with the pen icon, and we can now click on Save As, for example, and we can essentially make a copy of this file just by giving it a different name, such as underscore new, and then click on Save. And now we have our brand new file. Let's rearrange some of our toolbars at the top of our screen. We can move our mouse over any of the existing vertical sets of dots, and we can see that our cursor is changing to a white icon with four arrows facing in all four cardinal directions. So this tool set right here is for signing, and it only has two tools in it. So I can click on this group right here, and I can click and hold and just drag it to the right. If I move down, I can create a third line, and if there's no tools in that line and I move back up, it automatically gets rid of it because there's no need for it. So I can move this tool group up here, then I can move our sketch to sales tools up with it. And now as a result, I have more space so I can right click, click on measure. And now my measurement tools are right underneath my sketch to scale tools. I could take this concept one step further and start to organize my tools according to different disciplines. For example, I like to take my file tab, which are the first set of tools here in the upper left, and have them as my first set. It's nice to have save and save as in the same spot. They're typically in the upper left of almost all programs that we use that are related to Bluebeam Review. After that, we have rotate clockwise and rotate counterclockwise right in between our edit tool set, which has undo, redo, cut, copy, and paste. And this is how it is by default in the uh, review advanced profile. So I'm actually going to move this tool group. I'm going to move it down to the third row so I can move it all the way to the right. I'll move it up and I can move it right here at the end. I don't use it too often. Instead of using the rotate pages option, which is found under the view dropdown, and rotate view, I mean, excuse me. Instead of using rotate view, which is temporary, I actually prefer to use rotate pages, which I've covered this in another tutorial, but I'll just talk about it again here. We can actually click on the thumbnails drop down and click on rotate pages, and this is a permanent change that will actually affect how our pages print. While rotate view is temporary, and it can be a little confusing if you switch between either or, but if you quickly need to rotate something and then rotate it back, you can use your rotate view buttons right here, and that's a nice quick way to do it. As long as you turn them back, you should be solid. So now I've moved those two tools that I don't use too often to the right, and now I have edit right next to file. And if I wanted to, I could even go a step further and add separators in between my save as button and print button, and so on and so forth. But right now, the way my icons are organized and set up is pretty good for this demonstration. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial on customizing our toolbars in Bluebeam Review. Once again, my name is Ari, and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day.